Hello everyone, it's Lauren, and welcome to today's gameplay video. I will once again be taking my Amber Sapphire deck for a spin. Before getting into the games, I want to walk you through the changes I've made in to the deck in the meantime. Full disclosure, this is my second time recording this video, and the first time I had some issues with the audio, so I have a lot of changes to talk about from playing quite a few games. Starting with the one ink cards, I'm down to two flounder. While I believe the one drops to be extremely important at setting the pace, especially against aggressive decks, six is still a fine number, and with the mulligan system, you're likely to find one in your opening hand. The first large change is to the two drop slot. You'll notice that Phil is standing on his own now as I've removed the Simbas from the deck. Simba's great in the aggressive decks, but in this mid range to control deck, he just wasn't pulling his weight. So many of the threats you want your two drops to deal with are have three willpower. Simbas, Prince Eric's, and Ariel's come to mind. And Phil gets the nod as he can trade with them one for one. He can even quest and let your one drops trade up. The three and four ink characters are unchanged. Ariel and Mickey both put you up a card when they come into play, and Rapunzel and Hades serve the same role that they always have, and I can't imagine playing less than four of each. The five ink slot is the next sizable change. Instead of running the four full Maleficent, I'm down to three, but the five ink slot is so important to the deck, playing one on turn four after playing a Mickey on three is the goal, so I'm actually up to six total characters. Complementing the Maleficents are two characters who both are slightly smaller and only quest for two, but they both provide protection to your team, making them valuable. Aurora excels against any deck attempting to choose your characters, especially Ruby Amethyst decks and opposing Sapphire decks. Jasmine's healing ability doesn't always come up, but I've had games where she heals 10 to 20 damage over the course of a few turns. While I don't want four of either of them, as they are very situational, playing a 2-1 split has worked well, and Be Our Guest makes finding them when you need them easier. The 6s and the 7s remain mostly unchanged, but I am up a Robin Hood. As he answers, he still answers the hard to deal with evasives, and drawing a card when you're behind in that area is very helpful. Stitch and Hades continue to rule the late game, and I'd play 5 of each if I was allowed to. On to the actions. I'm up to two You Have Forgotten Me's. While it was bugged for me on Monday, it's been working since then, and a four ink two for one is great to have. And let's play the songs. I've added three one jump aheads to the song package while cutting two part of your worlds. Both of these cards are uninkable, which is not ideal, but moving the package to be more early game focused has been helpful. And that's the deck! I still have a lot of confidence in this color combination, and hope I haven't made the deck worse with these changes. See you in round one! Alright, it's time for game one. We're on the draw, and let's look at this hand. It has a lot of late game cards with two Stitch Surfers and a Hades, so I'm going to send those back. Oh, not Stitch New Dog, Stitch Surfer. Hakuna Matata will be ink on one, I can play Stitch. Hopefully I'll draw more ink to get up to Mickey on three. Yeah, I think this looks good. I'll confirm. Rapunzel's a good plan for getting some cards. Okay, Archimedes. So this looks like, I'm going to guess, Ruby Amethyst. So I'm going to ink Hakuna Matata, and I'm still going to lead on Stitch. He's not as important against Ruby Amethyst, if that's what this is, but he can apply some early game lore pressure and force them to do something they may not want to. Let's see what they have on turn two. It is Ruby Amethyst, and there's one Maleficent down, and an Archimedes of their own. So if I quest, they're almost guaranteed to want to trade off next turn. And that's fine with me. I'll get my one lore. I'm going to ink this Stitch 7 because we're a ways away from him. And I'm going to play a Be Our Guest, see what we can find. None of these are great. I think I'm just going to take... I'm just going to take the Stitch, and that'll be my ink for next turn. And I'll pass. There's an Aladdin gun. I like seeing these late game threats hit the ink well. Rafiki for Stitch, that's fine. Yes, it's a free card for them, but I'm not too concerned. 
flounder. I'm going to ink the stitch they know I have, not the flounder, just keep some equity in card mystery. And I am going to Mickey Mouse, get up to five for next turn. And pass. So something I've learned playing this matchup a few times is that if I let the Ruby Amethyst deck go on the aggressive, start questing like this, it can be dangerous because even though I have the late game power, they can still nickel and dime me up to 20. So I think it's correct to trade this Mickey for the Rafiki just to get uh, items off the board. Then I'm going to ink a flounder and play an aurora. Just want to be casting things that use up as much ink each turn as possible. And aurora stops their questing. Okay, so they're doing a friends, which means this Robin Hood next turn will be able to draw a card. The Cauldron, which, if I'm going to be honest, is one of my least favorite cards. I just, I find the amount of time it takes to Cauldron each turn to be frustrating. Okay, Aurora, I'm going to continue. You know, they're up 4-1 on lore, so I'm going to continue to control the board. Then I'm going to ink this Be Our Guest. And play the Robin Hood and draw a card. Hades, perfect, our late game is coming together. Let's see what they do. They don't have a good trade with Archimedes. Oh, they have another Rafiki, so they can trade Rafiki for Aurora. And they can Cauldron again. At least it looks like they're making their decisions quickly. Okay, there's no point in Hades in here. I am going to play Ariel and see if she can find something, which she can't. Let's put Stitch on top, followed by Hades, followed by Robin Hood. And I am going to quest for two. So against Sun decks, I would part of your world just to get something to ink. I could just get the Stitch and ink it. But... In this matchup, I think the part of your world is going to be so important for the late game plan that I'm just going to pass here. They are in the position of they need to figure out what to do right now, because I have two characters that are bigger than their one. Okay, Maui is a thing they can do. Inca Gaston. Hmm... See, they have three cards. If I ink, I go down to four. So there's no way for me to part of sing part of your world, get back Robin Hood, and draw a card off Robin Hood. But I think having Robin Hood in play, even if it doesn't draw a card, is what I want to do. So I'm going to sing part of your world. Oh, what happened to the Robin Hood? Oh, there it is. I just can't see. I'm gonna grab Robin Hood. I'm going to play Robin Hood. And I'm still not gonna ink anything, because I think these cards all have too much value. Next turn they can trade Maui for Ariel, which I knew that when I sang. Maui's almost always a two-for-one. You just kind of have to let it happen. But once they do that, Robin Hood becomes the biggest character on the board again. The Queen is the first must-answer threat they've presented. Just letting them draw cards is dangerous. 
Aurora. I think I like Aurora to protect my Robin Hood. And then I will sing Let It Go and take care of the Queen. And pass. We're tied on cards, but they're getting the best of their two cards each turn. We have a stock, a hand that's stocked full of great cards, though. And finally, our seventh ink has arrived. Sorry, Phil. So they just have an Archimedes. It's pretty free to start questing here. Get ahead on lore finally. And, you know, this is four turn. It's a real threat. I'm just gonna pass. Okay, they're questing, which means I see a Be Prepared coming. Yep, there it is. Mickey is not ideal, but I'll put him in play. Get up to an eighth ink in the inkwell. The goal of this deck for ink is normally to eventually get up to 11. 11 lets you play the four ink Hades, get back a seven ink Hades, and play the seven ink Hades. So Mickey getting us that free ink without having to touch these Rapunzel's is nice. The ink of Jafar, and play a Maleficent. So they have a steady stream of cards coming. We're going to need to figure out something with this Rap Rapunzel. So even if I ink a Rapunzel and play a Robin Hood, I still don't draw a card. So I'm just going to play Robin Hood out. And I'm going to quest with Mickey. They can pretty easily send Jafar into him. But that opens up me putting Robin Hood into Jafar and drawing some cards of Rapunzel next turn. So I think that's a fair trade to make. Yep, there's the expected banishing of my Mickey. Oh, and a Maleficent is not what I wanted to see. That puts me pretty far behind on board. But it's finally going to be time for this Hades to shine and get rid of that Maleficent. Stitch is something to work up to. You almost always want to draw cards of Stitch, but if you need to play him out when you can't draw cards, sometimes you have to. But now is not one of those times. Another Maleficent, and they inked one, if we remember, so that's three of the Maleficents down. We need to draw another Hades, or, or let it go. Let it go is fine. I'm gonna send Maleficent to the Inkwell. Quest, so they can quest for three next turn. I think, I don't want to, but I think it's time to just get a Rapunzel in play as something that can quest. And this means if we draw a Phil or a Stitch New Dog or a Flounder, we can play that and a Surfer Stitch and draw some cards next turn. Well, so much for that goal. And that was the first Dragonfire, so they very well may have more. I'm just going to play the Stitch at this point. We're so far away from drawing cards, getting the 4-8 on board is too important. Because they're going to quest, they can quest up to 15 this turn. Another Dragonfire. Yep, this game has just slipped away from us. We never drew a 4-drop Hades, which is definitely a problem. Let's see what be our guest can find. Maybe a 7-drop Hades? We did find the 7-drop Hades. We're putting a lot of good cards on bottom, but... 
that's what we have to do. We can at least answer this Jafar and greatly slow down their clock. So this might... they have three cards. They're going to have another Dragonfire or be prepared, which is going to stop us from stabilizing. Rafiki's not that scary. You Have Forgotten Me is pretty good. I They have three cards, so they get to keep their best, but I think it's worth it to just make them discard two. Let's see what they discard. Discard a Gaston and a Friends. I'm going to hold on to this Rapunzel because I'm going to quest this turn and hope that I get to draw some cards of Rapunzel next turn. Ugh, a Maui. This deck just has so much late game power and we've not drawn our late game engine, which makes it really difficult. They can quest up to 19. I might as well play this Maleficent. And I think I just have to play the Rapunzel at this point. But as it is, they can quest up to 19. I can banish the Rafiki, but I don't have a way to banish the Maleficent yet. And they have a dragon fire, so this game is over. So I'm going to concede, and I'll see you in game two. Alright, game two, we are again on the draw, and this hand is garbage. It's just nothing before a four drop, which is not good to play if you have anything else. I'm going to send all seven back, and hope we can get something a little bit better than this. Okay, we've got a fill, we've got an aerial, we've got a one jump ahead, a Mickey. This is definitely better. We're playing against Emerald, which is a rough matchup. Emerald Steel is interesting. I'm gonna send one of these Rapunzels to the Inkwell. And pass. Hans is being inked, and nothing. No quest, no plays. We drew a second fill, so I'm going to ink one of them. Now the question is, do I play a fill, or do I play a one jump ahead? Since they didn't play a two drop, I think it's safe to one jump ahead and try and get ahead in this game. So I'll pass here. They must have a 3-drop. Do they have a Cheshire Cat? Maybe they have a Tiny Tactician Tinkerbell? I'd much rather see the Tinkerbell than the Cat. Inca Simba... And there's the Tinkerbell. Okay. So that does threaten a big tank next turn, but we can threaten to let it go it if they do do that. Flounder's the perfect thing to ink. And I don't need help getting to five next turn, so I'm not going to play Mickey. I'm going to play Ariel. See if she can find a song. She can. I'll grab a Be Our Guest, I'll put Hades on top of these cards, followed by the Be Our Guest, and confirm, and I'll pass. 
This really slows down what my opponent can do unless they have a smash. But if they want to take turn 4 smashing an aerial and not progressing their board, I think that's a good place for me. Hmm, they start by drawing and discarding. If they don't play anything scary, my goal is to challenge Ariel into Tinkerbell and then Rapunzel that off the damage and draw some cards. They have a fire, are they going to play two Fire the Cannons to deal with my Ariel? No, they just played one, so they let me Rapunzel for free, draw my cards. Now drawing cards isn't the best thing against a sealed deck because they might play a whole new world, but I'd still rather have options than not. Ariel is going to challenge Captain Hook, get some cardboard off the table for them. They can easily, you know, send Tank into Ariel, but that's fine. And then I need to ink something. I think it's time to ink the fill. And I'll pass. They ink a tiny tank. Okay, so they play a Captain Hook to get back the Fire of the Cannons, which... I don't know, it still didn't make sense to fire the cannons the aerial to me. And they draw and discard with Tinkerbell. Let's see what they discarded. They grab your swords and they discarded a whole new world the first time. Okay, those are two scary songs that are gone, which is what I like to see. I don't have a good challenge here, so let's see what we can do. We can be up at 6 ink, which I'm going to start by singing Be Our Guest. See if that gives me something to do. And we see nothing but songs. That is unfortunate. Be Our Guest almost never misses. So we have six ink, which just doesn't match up well with any of these cards except playing Robin Hood. So I'm going to ink my stitch. And play a Robin Hood. And do I want to quest for Rapunzel? They can send both of their characters in to my Rapunzel. Yeah, I don't think I do. I'm just going to pass. Let's see what my opponent has. <clears throat> they continue to draw and discard with tank. And the exerted tank means even if they draw a big tank, they can't challenge this turn, which is good. Let's see what they discarded. Another whole new world. I like seeing these whole new worlds gone, because it's hard for me to empty my hand. Cusco is scary. It's one of the scariest cards for this deck to play against. Captain Hook manages my aerial, that's fine. Stitch is interesting, but I'm just going to send Robin Hood into Captain Hook. Then I'm going to Rapunzel to heal my Robin Hood. Thank you, Phil, and you have forgotten me. I will ink the Phil, and I'll play the Mickey.
and this time they don't have five power on board, so I can finally get my first two lore by questing with Rapunzel, and I'll pass. So they can quest for four if they want to, but they're only at two right now, so I'm not that scared. Normally Emerald decks are much quicker off the, you know, quicker to get started. We didn't see a Flynn Rider this game on turn two, which was very good for us. Mad Hatter, so they're starting to deploy the scary five drops. But we have a let it go for the Mad Hatter. Well, we don't have a let it go for the Mad Hatter anymore. Their third whole new world. We did draw into the let it go though, so we can answer that. And they sang, they played Mad Hatter this turn, so even though they sang a whole new world, they don't have ink. The inkwell is still a little bugged with songs, so I had to figure out if they had ink or not. One drop Captain Hook is fine. And draw a discard. This tank is definitely running through their deck, but it does mean they're not questing at all, which has been good for me in the long run. Robin Hood. So I'm going to start by inking the Sounder and then figure out what I want to do. They have access to 9 ink. What is in my discard? A stitch. A stitch would be nice. So I'm going to spend my nine ink first by singing Let It Go on Mad Hatter. Then by playing a Hades, getting back a stitch. Stitch will be the plan for next turn. And then I'm going to play this Maleficent. We're going to threaten to quest for a lot next turn. And speaking of that, we will quest with both of our Rapunzels and our Mickey. They have a free banish of the Mickey with Captain Hook, but that means they're not banishing a Rapunzel, so I'm fine with that. And I'll pass. They do have six cards in hand, so let's see what they can do. But we're threatening how much? We're threatening 11 next turn, up to 18. And they only have five on board, up to seven. So we're winning this race by quite a bit. Smash a Rapunzel, and then they're going to trade something, or banish Rapunzel with Hook. Okay. We still have nine lore on board, so they need to do something. There's Big Tank. Okay, and it was a shift. I don't know why the damage isn't showing up on Maleficent, but if I hover over her and Mickey, it shows that it's there. Pixelborn is great. There's still some small little things that need to be dealt with, but it's one person and it's third party, so I am not one to complain. I'm going to guess that this tank challenges Robin Hood, but I'm not positive. They could then shock Hades or Mickey. Fire the cannons, Hades. Okay. 
now Tank challenges Robin Hood and shocks... Oh, Tank challenges Rapunzel and shocks Mickey. And they quest for three up to five. I'm gonna start with a stitch, draw some cards, see what happens. Select Hades and Aurora. Okay. I'm gonna ink one of these Auroras. She's actually pretty good in this matchup, but we don't need two. And to use my ink, I'm gonna lunge up ahead. And I am going to trade Robin Hood for Tank. Just getting her off the board is important. But Maleficent is going to quest. As long as I'm questing with Maleficent, I'm staying ahead of their Cusco, which is important. And I'll pass. Lady Tremaine. Interesting. 38, 27. Is this the mill deck? And I just now realized it? This might be the mill deck. Weird. I have never played against the Mildek before. I knew it was a thing, but this is my first time playing against it. Let's see, Lady Tremaine was six ink, so they have three ink left. I'm enough to smash my Maleficent and then send Captain Hook into her. So I have 20 cards. Let it go. I'm going to start with a Hades on Lady Tremaine. Just, Lady Tremaine's not scary, but I want to get this Hades on board. Then I'm going to Inca Phil and play this Maleficent. If they're going to keep a whole new worlding, just emptying my hand and getting as many big threats on board as possible is where I want to be. And I will quest a stitch up to 12, and I have 7 on board, so I can't quite present lethal, but we're very close. They're going to have to mill me out at this point, unless they can deal with all of my characters with a lot of willpower in their steel deck, which is not an easy feat. But there's Lady Tremaine again to get back a whole new world. I have 19 cards, so this will put me down to 12. So I'll be able to survive one more whole new world after this one. Which I think is going to be enough time. Servers. They're not a well, they could still a whole new world. And there it is. We draw a Hades for the Cerberus, which is nice. I'm at twelve cards, so I don't want to draw any extras at this point. I just want to play Hades, send Cerberus to the Inkwell, um, I guess I'll play this Hades just to use my ink. I don't want to any of these other cards except for this Hades effectively draws a card, which is not what I want to do. 
I have one ink left. I am just going to get back a stitch and play it. And then I'm going to start questing. Puts me up to 19. They have to deal with all of my characters or cast two a whole new worlds. I don't think they're going to be able to deal with all my characters, so let's see if they can cast two a whole new worlds in the same turn. When how many have been used? One, two, three. Three have been used. But there's Lady Tremaine to get one of them back. This is going to be close, because they can sing a whole new world, and then if they draw their fourth a whole new world, they can play it. Yeah. So they have seven ink, not two. Let's keep that in mind. And if they draw if they draw a Lady Tremaine or a whole new world, that's enough. But they still have fifteen cards is not a lot. They've gone through three Lady Tremaine and three a whole new world. So it's not a given that they'll find one. I wonder if they play they're digging. I wonder if they play Do It Again as well. Because Do It Again would do it. This is really close. Hatter, are they slow rolling me or do they not have it? Again, I don't know if they're slow rolling me or if they don't have it. This is very tense. Okay, they didn't have it. Let's quest with our little baby stitch for the win. All right, that was a close game, but we pulled it off. I'll be back for game three. Time for game three. We're on the play. This is going to be the last game for today. Sorry, I know I promised five games in the future, but with the audio issues I had earlier, this is all I'm going to be able to fit in. Let's look at this hand. This hand is really good. I'm going to send... Yeah, I have no ramp at all, so I am going to send this Hades back. It's something that we can find later. And we drew another stitch in its place. Okay, so I'm going to ink the Sukuna Matata and lead off of a stitch. And let's see what we're playing against. And we're playing against Amber, and they also have Carefree Stitch. Okay. So they didn't play a one drop, so I'm just going to get my quest for one. I'm going to ink the second stitch, dog. As they've shown that they are a late game deck with Surfer Stitch. And I'm going to play Be Our Guest. And here I'm going to draw the Mickey. All of these are good late game. Let's put part of your world on top. Followed by Rapunzel, followed by You Have Forgotten Me. And pass. Let's see if we can find out more about our opponent's deck. Okay, so there's Steel Amber. Prince Eric, you know, that stops me from questing, but that's not the end of the world. I have a lot of songs accounted for already, so I think I'm just going to ink this aerial. And I'm going to play the Mickey. Make sure I can Maleficent next turn. 
and I'll pass. Inca Smash. And play their own aerial. Okay, let's see if they find anything. They don't. Alright. In this instance, as good as Rapunzel is, I don't have a great way to get damage on my character, so I'm just going to ink her. And play Maleficent. I have faith that these let it goes will be good late game. And here I pass. The Inca Big Tank. Good. Don't want to see that card. And play another aerial. Will this one hit? They get a Hakuna Matata, so they get some ink. That's not a big deal. nothing. Well, I am going to take advantage and quest for three. I'm going to play another Mickey. And then I'm going to ink this Flounder. That way if we draw a seven drop, we can just cast it next turn. And here I'll pass. You Have Forgotten Me is good. Gets rid of both of my Let It Goes. Maybe that was a reason for holding on to the Flounder. I have not been good at playing around You Have Forgotten Me. That's definitely something that I need to work on. Are they going to send all three of their characters in my Maleficent? She gained me three lore and she traded for three of their characters. I will take that. Hakuna Matata is not great. I'm just going to quest for three, and I'll hold on. Let's see, if I draw Hades... Yeah, I'm just going to hold on to the Sukuna Matata, see if we can get them to waste another You Have Forgotten Me. They have so many more cards in their hand. The You Have Forgotten Me's are just so good. Which is not something I thought I would say earlier in this game's life. Okay. We can play an aerial. Let's hope we find a song. Nope. Let's put Rapunzel on top, followed by You Have Forgotten Me, followed by Ariel. And I'm going to quest with the two Mickeys. I'm really regretting inking that Rapunzel now. Just being able to maybe pick up some cards back, but for now, this is what we've got. We do have a 9-0 lore advantage, so they're going to have to figure something out. Okay, so this was a shift, so they can... And then sing. Oof. Well, that was bad. We've got our Maleficent, though. Hans, they go questing for two. Play a Mickey. Start getting that ink up. And I will quest with Maleficent. They don't have a great way to deal with Maleficent on board. They can challenge both, and then we trade for Hans. And we get a bunch of damage on the Tinkerbell. Another Grab Your Swords, though, will take care of everything. Okay, we need a good draw. Hades kind of counts. I'll send Tinkerbells to the Inkwell. And pass. Ink Kuna Matata. 
Okay, we're getting closer on cards. Grab your swords. Smash. And quest. Okay. We need another rip off the top. Be our guest. Works. Hopefully we can find something good. We find a Hades. Let's put Stitch on top, followed by Aurora. I can finally ink this Akuna Matata I've been holding on to. And we're both going to be empty handed, but I'm going to have a Hades in play and they're going to have nothing in play. So that's a good position to be in. I'm also at 12 lore to their 6. So this looks looking bad for a while, but we've caught back up. Them spending three cards or two cards last turn on a Hades was good for me. They draw a Cerberus. And we continue to rip well with another Hades to send the Cerberus to the Inkwell. And quest for two up to 14. They have their own be our guest, but their top end is not as scary as ours. Yeah, they can have a tank, that's fine. They can deal one to both of my Hades. I am just going to quest for 4 to 18. I might as well put this fill into play. And pass. If for some reason I can't win next turn, yeah, I don't know what putting this film in the play versus the inkwell really does. I think I have this. I don't know what one card they could have. Beast is not it. Yeah, so they send Tinkerbell in and they concede. All right, that was game three. I'll go back to the deck view and talk about what happened. All right, so that was a 2-1 finish, which is good, not great. was a winning record, so I can't complain, though losing to Ruby Amethyst hurts. We did never see a Hades Lord of the Underworld, which is kind of the main card against that deck, which makes things harder. I... I don't know what else we could do to help the end game. We could potentially play some Bell because she has a lot of questing power once you get to 10 ink. But I'm not sold on her. I actually tried her between Monday and today and she just, most of the time I inked her because I would see her well before I was at 10 ink and it wasn't worth it. I think maybe I should cut Jasmine and play a third Aurora. Aurora's protection ability is much better than Jasmine's, which is why I'm on the 2-1 split. But yeah, Jasmine just never really came up. There were a couple times when I thought, okay, if I can draw Jasmine and play it here, this would be good. But Aurora protecting from the dragon fires and from the Maleficent dragons just might be where... I should be. Turn the five drops into a 3-3 split between Aurora and Maleficent. That's a change that I will make and try going forward, but by the next time I show off this deck, I might look completely different. Anyway, if you enjoyed this gameplay, please like and subscribe. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Thanks for watching!